to another episode of Access Ability. It's a show on YouTube where I talk about the video game industry, accessibility, and representation. Basically, how can we help more people to play games and more people to see themselves in the games they play? As someone lucky enough to work in the video game industry, I am aware that I don't have to think about video game pricing nearly as often as most other gamers. I get a lot of review codes that mean that I can check out a lot of video games throughout the year of a lot of different genres and not really have to worry about their price. But that is certainly not the case for everyone and particularly for certain groups of gamers, video game pricing is a big barrier to accessibility. On the whole, disabled gamers are less well off financially than non-disabled gamers. From barriers getting into and maintaining work, to increased costs of living associated with being a disabled person, your income is likely to be less if you are disabled, and you're gonna have less disposable income on the whole to spend on things like video games. When you take into account additional costs of gaming, such as accessibility controllers being more expensive than standard controllers, this means that a lot of disabled gamers have to be very thoughtful about how and where they spend their money on video games. So today, on Access Ability, we're going to talk about Xbox Game Pass. We're going to talk about the ways that the service has made gaming more accessible for a variety of disabled gamers, and we're going to talk about some of the unique challenges faced by disabled gamers that Xbox Game Pass is helping to overcome. For anyone unaware, what is Game Pass? Well, Game Pass is a Microsoft subscription service, available on Xbox and PC, where players can pay a recurring monthly fee for access to, but not ownership of, digital games. Players can download as many games as they like, play them through to completion, and find something else to play, as long as they continue to be subscribed to the service. The service contains a mix of both first-party and third-party games, often added to the service on release day and has a pretty huge library at this point covering big budget AAA games, as well as interesting indie releases. Here in the UK, Game Pass costs £7.99 per month for either PC or Xbox, or £10.99 per month for both platforms, as well as a few other extras such as game streaming, which we'll talk about later. At current prices, a year of Game Pass subscription at the Ultimate tier for PC, Xbox and streaming costs around £130 a year around the price of two to three full price day one AAA video games. So how does Game Pass function as accessibility for disabled gamers? Well, in more ways than you might imagine. Firstly, let's dig into the bigger picture of Game Pass's price proposition. Being able to play a wide catalogue of video games without an upper limit on how many games you can play for the price of two to three AAA releases per year is a strong value proposition on its own for those who want to play through a lot of games, some of which are big budget day one releases, but are financially limited in what they can spend. However, a big part of the pricing proposition is the number of devices these games can be played on. Xbox Game Pass is available on PC, a device many people already own outside of gaming, on last generation Xbox consoles, next generation consoles, and if you're subscribed to Game Pass Ultimate, even works via streaming on your phone or tablet. If you've got a good internet connection and an Xbox controller, you can play brand new Xbox games on release day on your existing tablet, with the game itself being run remotely on Xbox hardware somewhere else in the world. It won't be a perfect experience, but it's an option that doesn't require any upfront investment in hardware strong enough to run modern games. Microsoft has made a real effort to make their own software, as well as their Game Pass offerings, available to as many players as possible regardless of platform. No pressure to upgrade right away to next generation consoles, or even to purchase a console at all. Just play a bunch of games on hopefully a device you already own. Beyond the discussion of price, there's another area of accessibility afforded by services like Xbox Game Pass. The ability to try out a game and see if it's accessible for you or not without risking your limited budget. Many game developers today are still pretty terrible about telling people in advance of launch what level of disabled player accessibility exists within their games. Some developers don't announce accessibility features at all before release day. Some mention features in broad strokes that don't give enough detail to be useful for purchasing choices, and in many cases a disabled gamer who wants to play a video game on day one will be taking a financial risk. If they buy a game, and it turns out to be unplayable for them, that's money down the drain they may not be able to recover. With services like Game Pass, 
If a disabled player picks up a game, and it turns out not to be accessible to them, they can simply delete it and download something else to play. Sure, in a perfect world, game developers would just tell us in advance what accessibility settings and options their games have ahead of release, but until then, Game Pass offers a safer option for checking out games on their release day in many cases. Additionally, if you're a gamer with a condition such as ADHD, and struggle to focus on completing a single game before needing to hop around and try something different, Game Pass offers enough variety of games that it's easy to just jump around, trying lots of little bits of different things, without that quickly becoming an expensive proposition. Obviously, Xbox Game Pass isn't going to be right for everyone. At the end of the day, you don't own the software that you're playing, and that can get people with certain disabilities to feel trapped in recurrent spending models, which is not ideal. But for a large number of disabled players, the option to just pay a small recurrent fee to play games on devices they may already own, and if a game turns out to not be accessible for them, that's fine, they can just download and play something else, is much more accessible than the prospect of buying a big budget game every now and then and not being certain upfront whether it's going to be playable for them. For many, Xbox Game Pass has made keeping up to date on modern releases, be they big budget or indie, financially accessible. So many aspects of gaming are more expensive for disabled gamers, from getting your hands on accessibility focused controllers, to having to purchase DLC to unlock accessibility settings, but while Xbox Game Pass isn't going to fix those problems, it does take us a step closer to having more solutions for making gaming more accessible for disabled gamers.